Hello all, my name is Dana Lohr by yourself from Professor Oud Gazit Lab at the Tel Aviv University. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity to talk today and to take you into a journey from basic biology to drug discovery using the EAST model. Molecular self-assembly is the spontaneous association of molecules through non-covalent bonds into stably, structurally well-defined aggregates. The self-assembly process can lead to the formation of ordered assembly called amyloid structure. The minimal bidding block for the formation of the amyloid was originally found to be protein. Well, the last two decades, it was found that peptide can also form this structure. And it was found in our lab in the last decade that also single amino acid can form amyloid-like structure. So here we can see a paper published in our lab in 2012, where we were able to show that the pathological concentration when phenylalanine is accumulated, it can form fibers. These fibers were shown in electromicroscopy as well as using amyloid line. In addition, using antibody specifically for the fibers, for the phenylalanine fiber, we were able to show detection both in mice models and individuals with PKU. PKU is a disorder related to the accumulation of phenylalanine, and I will elaborate about it in the next few slides. In the, in the three years after, we were also able to show that other metabolites, not even only amino acid, also nucleobases, can form this structure. Here you can see that adenine can form this structure, as well as other metabolites that are listed in the paper. So, if metabolites can form aggregates, it means that there must be in the cells quality control mechanisms that will allow sufficient supplies of metabolites on one end, but also will strictly monitor the level to avoid aggregation. This novel discovery led, led to a new study in our lab called metabolostasis, the cellular process that keeps metabolites homostasis in vivo. This research is supported by the John Templeton Foundation. There is, as you can see here in the figure, we believe that there are two stages. When the metabolostasis is balanced, we have LC cells. But when the metabolostasis is imbalanced, it can lead to pathology such as inborn metabolism. Inborn metabolism are disorders, genetic disorders, that are caused due to genetic manipulation in an enzyme in a metabolic pathway. This mutation leads eventually to the accumulation of some substrates, some metabolites. When these metabolites are accum accumulated, it can lead to pathology. Inborn metabolism are uh, divided into 15 groups according to the metabolites that are being accumulated. Today, there is no treatment to most of these disorders. There are more than 1,000 disorders. And in most of the, in part of the countries, including Israel, every newborn is, bad, is being checked by getting his heel pricked for blood specimen when still in the hospital. This is important to do it in the hospital because if a baby is being diagnosed with one of these disorders, then you need to be uh, uh, supplied with a, a special diet immediately. The pathology and the symptoms are very among the diseases. So we need a simple, reliable, and screenable model for indoor metabolism. And we chose to use our favorite model, the EAST model, but manipulating the relevant metabolic pathway, which eventually will lead to accumulation of the desired metabolite. So as part of all the goodies we all know about EAST, it was also used as a model for neurogenerative disorder and become a well-established research tool, providing both best, basic intelligence insight as well as platform for development of therapeutic uh, agents, including Alzheimer, Parkinson, Huntington, and also diabetes. Here you can see the paper, our paper published two years ago about an in vivo EAST model for adenine accumulation. As you can see here, when we manipulate two genes that are important in the salvage pathway of adenine, it led to adenine accumulation. We were able to show using mass spectrometry that indeed on the, indeed on the SD complete media, uh, the double mutant show high level intracellular level of adenine. Only the double mutant on the end as the complete. When we compare the growth of the yeast, this white type, the single, and the double mutant, both in serial dilution and kinetic growth, we saw that in the 
the presence of adenine in the SD complete media, we saw a significant reduction in the growth. Interestingly, when we excluded only the adenine from the media, it suppressed the toxicity significantly. This means that the presence of adenine is toxic to the ether. Okay, so a lot of adenine is toxic. Is it indeed amyloids? So we examined it and we saw that in vivo formation of adenine amyloid assembly using amyloid specific fluorescent dye, as well as using antibody against adenine fiber structures. Polyphenols were repeatedly shown to inhibit the formation of protein amyloid fibers. So as a proof of concept, we examined one of these polyphenols, tannic acid, and we saw that indeed the addition of the tannic acid rescued the growth of the yeast. Interestingly, without changing the adenine concentration, this result implied that the cell growth inhibition was indeed caused by toxic structure rather than the presence of high level of adenine. So to summarize, the yeast models for neurogenerative disorders so far are, uh, um, include accumulation of protein and the expression is endogenesis. In our model, we are dealing with metabolite aggregation and the expression is endogenesis. This means that we actually mimic what happened in the patient. We just manipulate the relevant enzyme leading to the accumulation of the relevant metabolite. And according to our study, this will lead to the uh, formation of the structures. So one road that we went through was drug discovery. Now that we have the yeast model, we decided to go to drug discovery and try to find novel inhibitors for metabolite self-assembly. This study was done in collaboration with the Blabatic Center for Drug Discovery, which is a fully integrated center for translation research based at the Tel Aviv University. Okay, so our approach was start with the yeast model, go to high throughput screen, optimization when needed, validation, and preclinical validation using a mice model. So we had a yeast model, we used the yeast model that I just mentioned, and we went through phenotypic screening in yeast. The data analysis base was based on curve slope and error calculation. Eventually, we started with a library of 2,560 small molecules, and at the end, end up with four molecules that were validated in patient cell model for the relevant disorders that related to adenine accumulation. We are now going into mice model. Okay, so we talked about today about metabolite aggregation. And actually, we know that also protein can aggregate. So we believe that actually the protein and the metabolite can cross talk. And metabolites so far were also con only considered as a byproduct of several neurogenerative disorders. We believe now this is not a by byproduct. Metabolites might play a central role in one of these maladies, serving, it, serving as the primary agent that sets the aggregative process in motion by displaying a crosstalk with amyloid proteins. You can see here a paper we published recently where we were able to show crosstalk between one metabolite, homocysteine, and amyloid beta in Alzheimer's disease. So, with that, I would like to end and to thank our professor Aoud Gazit for his endless support and for giving me tons of independency for all the Gazit group and specifically the Metabolic Studies Club, Maoz, Shona, Nami, Ilana, Rat, Lee, and Kayla. I would like to thank our collaborators, the member of the Blavatnik Center, the Martin Kuplex Lab for great advisors and our supporters, the John Templeton Foundation, the Israeli Science Foundation, and the Orphan Disease Center. And of course, for all of you for listening, thank you very much.